when you receive your diff, you should have a shim set. The rest of the bolts hold the ring gear onto the flange. And you'll have a pack of washers, we'll get to that later. Uh, and then you'll also have an outer oil seal. So first thing we need to do when you get your diff, because every diff is a little bit different, we need to ensure that when we are screwing in these 16 bolts, that we don't bottom out into the holes in the ring gear. So it's loosely assembled. The first thing we're going to do is remove these bolts, hang on to the ring gear so it doesn't fall. Set that down. You can see that there's a shim that came with it. This is your baseline shim. This should get your ring gear pretty close to where it originally started. So you'll be adding and subtracting from the shims to dial in the backlash. So first we need to determine how many threads are in each hole. And you need to know how many turns your bolt can spin into this before it bottoms out so that when you assemble this onto the differential and you subtract shims or add shims, you know how many turns you have before it's bottoming out. Because if you're loose at the end of it, because like let's say you know there's eight turns to get to the bottom here and uh, you, you bottom out at exactly eight and you don't realize it, you may still have a gap between the ring gear and the flange um, and your ring gear might be loose. So however many turns we measure here, you need to make sure you have what fewer turns than that when you're putting the bolts in at the end. So I like to just uh, go around and turn them all in first. I was also going to make sure that there's no issues with the bolts. You know, you don't have any bad threads in the bolts or any bad threads in the holes for whatever reason. So you can use an impact gun at this point and we're just going to turn all these in until they get tight. Make sure you're not driving them in. Go around and just make a mark to mark where each one starts. Now we're going to go around and count how many turns it takes to unscrew each one. Three, four, Match up. We had seven and a quarter. Everything had eight or seven and three quarters. So we're just going to recheck it. Now that you know how many turns you can get out of these holes, we're going to go put the baseline shim back in. And we're going to bolt it up. Make sure it stays well aligned. Just kind of loosely do it. With these tight, you shouldn't feel any play here, but then you just want to check a couple of these bolts. So we're going to do the same exercise now, see how many turns it takes to unscrew it. Seven and just about seven and a quarter. We know it takes seven and a quarter turns to get this tight. Since all of ours were seven and three quarters or eight, we know that with the current shim that's installed, we can't bottom out the holes. Now, if we were to remove this shim or go with a smaller shim, there's a potential that you might bottom out the holes. If that's the case, then you need to definitely be aware of that and you need to add washers here around each one. So normally you should not have to add any washers. If anything, you'll probably be adding shims and then you're gonna get actually less thread engagement. The flip side of things, you wanna watch you know, to make sure that you don't have a really small thread engagement. If you're talking like three or four threads, you know, give me a call and we'll figure out uh, why. Now we're gonna add all our bolts back in because we're gonna go install it and check the backlash for the first time. 
accurate backlash measurement. Technically, you want everything torqued here. So we're just getting a kind of a first look at it. I'm going to kind of forego the, the torquing everything exactly. We're Put the diff back in the transmission. We're going to want to assemble the differential onto the outer cover plate and we're going to put the subshaft back in. Very careful that it will not necessarily hold together. Make sure you get this lined up. You should be able to turn it. There's a little bit of a lead in here. Reinstall the differential, make sure the seal is nice and clean, make sure that this surface is clean. These two bolts are really far apart, generally go down to so kind of look at the hole spacing and get lined up ahead of time. And then be really careful not to bump this, basically this differential ring gear here into this sealing surface. We really have to protect this, so be very careful, especially on the bottom. If anything, hit along the top because the oil all sits in the bottom. Very gently just tap the thing. Be very careful, these are, threads are really weak in here, so don't hit them with any substantial amount of torque on accident. Go around and just get these snugged up. Don't torque them. You really choke up on whatever tool you're using so that you can't possibly strip these. We're going to come to the back here and we're going to set up our backlash measurement again. Remember, this is just the difference between one way and the other, right? Kind of taking up all the slots here. So here we're looking around 30 thousandths right now. Our goal is going to be to get in the 10 to 15 range. So in order to decrease that backlash, we're going to have to add shims between the ring gear and the flange. So when we're back on the bench, we're going to pull this stub axle out again. Uh, this is really easy to do with a pair of pry bars with the new diff. So you just get under a couple of these gears and just slowly pry it up. The size of all your shims is carved out of them. So we have a 0.5 millimeter. Uh, we need to decrease our backlash, uh, so we're going to have to add more shims. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to add a 0.2 millimeter shim and see where this comes out. So now we're down to about 22. So we started we started at 30. We added 0.2 millimeters and we went to 22. That's eight. So if we add about another 0.3, we should be in range theoretically. We you want to get us down 10 to about 15. 10. Yeah, let's just take us down yeah. another 10. We'd only be at 16 if we added another two yeah yeah so we'll add 0.3 so we'll replace our 0.2 with a 0.5 so we had our baseline shim plus a 0.2 that took us from 30 down to about 22 thousandths and so we think we're going to go with another 0.3 so we're going to replace the 0.2 with a 0.5 
crossing our fingers that that's going to be the ticket. Alright, so now we are too tight. Yeah, about 4 thousandths movement. So we're going to back off. We added 0.3, we're probably going to go back to this 0.2 added. We're going to bump down a tenth of a millimeter. 0.5 is going to turn into a pair of 0.2s. Where you want to be. That's a, Good. Basically, anywhere from like seven under to seven over. Seven over, so we're right at ten. Now that we have our backlash where we want it, we're going to do a final assembly of this. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to lock type all of these bolts. Replace this outer seal since it's the last time we're putting it back together. When you're putting your new one in, it's really important to get the orientation right. So it's a C-shaped cross section, and that's the open end of the C is going to go towards the inside. We're going to do the final assembly now. You want to make sure that there's no uh, nicks or anything on this. If there are, if there's anything big, you want to just very lightly sand it down. Um, and then really, if there's, if there's anything at all, or even if there isn't, recommend just putting a little bit of sealant in here, especially on the bottom. Uh, it's basically, you know, your fluid is just going to sit here and then and leak out of the bottom if there's any kind of problems. We're down to 10. So tilting everything down just took a little bit just out of it. Just took a little bit, yeah. yeah. That's okay. Right on the bottom end where we want to be, have some nice engagement. Yeah. 